Welcome. My name is Nicholas Tierney, and I am Chief Operating Officer of Regen Med. For patients, clinicians, and regulators alike, the field of regenerative medicine is in need of more real-world data. To help address this problem, we have begun forming evidence-based communities, or circles, with clinical leaders from around the world. Today, we're proud to announce the Clinical Evidence Leadership Lecture Series, or CELLS for short, which feature those clinical leaders as they describe their protocols and evidence-based results. And at the end of each video, we will have further information on how to connect or collaborate with the presenters. We hope you enjoy the episode and find it informative for your practice. I am Dr. Catalan, orthopedic surgeon based in Palma de Mallorca, Spain. And the last few years, I have specialized in the using of biolytics, mainly PRP and BNC, for treating musculoskeleticas injuries. I run my own clinic, the bot, to sport medicines, Catalan trauma. I have to clearly define groups that come to my clinic, young adults practicing different sports due to overuse, mainly involving tendinopathies and muscular relation. And the old patient, older than 55, 70 years in many cases, with degenerative problems, knee osteoarthritis, is the best example and the most common. In my opinion, there is an abuse of indicating young replacement surgeries. And many patients with an inflammatory component have a high fallary risk. For many of the patients that come to my clinic, other conservative approaches had not been explored. Physiotherapy, hyaluronic acid injection, PRP injection, etc. I am Severo Sanjos, PhD cell biologist. Knee osteoarthritis is a multifactorial disease characterized by the progressive damage of the articular cartilage along with important changes in subchondral bone and all other joint structures, such as synovium, meniscus, ligaments, and muscles. Most experts in the field agree that subchondral bone plays a key role in the pathophysiology of this disease. However, most biologic treatments which are delivered intraarticularly are not able to reach the subchondral bone, which is located immediately below the layer of calcified cartilage that forms the osteochondral unit together with the articular cartilage. Dr. Miguel Sanchez and collaborators published a seminal paper in 2016 combining intraarticular and intraosseous PRP injections as a novel approach for treating severe knee OA, improving knee joint function in patients affected by this disease. Dr. Jose Miguel Catalan has adopted this new approach and I have assisted with collecting and correlating real world data including his treatment protocol, PRP characterization, and patient reported outcomes to help validate his results. He will now present his approach and I will follow up by presenting the early results and correlations observed so far. Several years ago, I started using intraosseum BBC containing MSCs and platelets as well for treating no unions and a vascular necrosis of femoral head. For knee osteoarthritis, I don't believe that the intraosseous PRP injection helps restoring the affected subchondral bone, esterus in osteoarthritis patients. The first key aspect is to clearly define by using radiology evaluation and MRI the disease states and affecting compartments, especially chains in subchondral bone. Depending on the disease severity and underlying case, I manage this pathology in different ways. I usually perform an initial arthrosynthesis to extract synovial fluid when there is a fusion or apparent increasing in young synovial fluid due to inflammation. Intraosseous injection under local anesthesia and sedation in the affecting compartments, very commonly tibial plate, femoral condylo, or patella, five millimeters per injection site. Second additional poor PRP injection only in this case interarticular every two weeks, 10 millimeters of PRP. Autologous biologic products are obtained from different tissue sources, 
blood, bone marrow, adipose tissue, etc., and are usually comprised by live cells, stromal cells, mesenchymal stem cells, hematopoietic stem cells, and can be also tissue derivatives or cell derived products such as growth factors or cytokines. Each of these products is affected by biological variability due to differences in the same subject intra-individual over time due to aging, diurnal cycles and hormones, etc. But also there are significant differences between subjects inter-individual due to differences in genetics, health, immune status or diet among others. In the specific case of PRP, a wide range of factors could influence the clinical performance of the final product obtained in terms of composition and concentration of growth factors and cytokines. For example, the production method, number of centrifugations, G-force or time used, and the type of device utilized. The use of activation protocol and which one, uh, calcium chloride, thrombin, such variables affect the final product obtained each with potentially clinical significance, a low versus high leukocyte concentration, different platelet concentration factor or platelet dose are just some examples. These key factors can be easily calculated, recorded and plotted to correlate with clinical findings. For example, the patient reported outcomes such as WOMAC. For PRP characterization, I take a liquid around 0.5 millimeters of peripheral blood and final PRP product. And then perform a complete blood count using my own hematologic analysis to record the number of replicate cells, platelets, leukocytes per milliliter. This allows to calculate different important factors, total plate dose, concentration factor, etc. I believe that we will be able to customize our PRP treatments in the early future. To get the right answers, you have to ask the right questions. Allow me to explain the overall design of our study using a single case. First of all, we wanted to correlate PRP characteristics with clinical outcomes. So the first important point here is that Dr. Catalan and his team, they are using his own hematology analyzer to collect the blood and PRP characteristics using the characterization survey. So it only takes two or three minutes to do this analysis and a few seconds to complete all the results here in the survey about leukocyte concentration, erythrocytes, platelets per meal, the volume of PRP delivered, and the same for the final PRP product. And now let's take a closer look at these specific patient results. So here we have the results of this patient regarding the visual analog scale and also the WOMAC superscales, WOMAC pain, WOMAC stiffness, and WOMAC physical function. And each patient has data comparing the baseline, the condition before the treatment here. And then in this case, after three months and six months. Now let's see some results in aggregate using the report builder capability. We go here to reports. We open one of our reports already created. We have set up this graph to show the total WOMAC score in the Y axis and the time in the X axis here from the preoperative condition on the left until 12 months of follow-up. The graph is showing the WOMAC total over time for all these patients. In cohort A in blue here, we see that we have 53 patients in the preoperative group. We have 19 after 
having data after two months of follow-up. And then we have only seven after three months. So we still need to continue collecting data over time and creating more cases. Here you see that we have created two different cohorts, patients older than 65 in black, patients having less than 55 years old in green, and we can very easily add new cohorts. For example, here, the patient's age, we put greater than or equal to 70 years old. We add this cohort filter, and then it appears on the screen, a new cohort, cohort D in, in gray, in which it seems that the older patients are not doing so good but this is something that we need to confirm by including more data, more cases, more follow-ups. And that's why it's, it's so important to have as many cases as possible and as many members in the circle as possible. After we have created a report, we can easily create a raw Excel file to dig deeper. We simply click this button here the Excel report has been exported. And here we see several interesting data about the PRP product. For example, for all the cases created in the platform, we can see the platelet concentration per mil in the PRP. Here we see the average is close to 500 million platelets per mil. The standard deviation here, the minimum and maximum values that ranges from 300 million up to uh, 850, which is a significant variability between the patients. And we can also calculate the platelet concentration factor. The average is 2.5 which means that the platelet concentration is 2.5 times more than the baseline in blood. And for example, we also have here the, the platelet dose per injection, which is around 5,000 million platelets per injection. And as you can see, it also ranges from 2,000 up to 11,000 million, which is a very significant uh, variability. And at this point, what we can tell is that we see clear trends. We know very well our PRP in this case, but we still need more data to be able to perform more advanced statistical analysis and make stronger conclusions in the future. I would say that we all physicals and orthopedic surgeon working with biologists need more data, especially to demonstrate treatment efficacy. I would like to invite other orthopedic surgeons to join my circle. This will allow us all to collect valuable, aggregated data together to advance this promising file. I offer visits to my clinic in Mallorca to see live real cases with me and my team including introduction injection of PRP or BNC. You can contact me by mail, catalantrauma.gmail.com. We thank Dr. Jose Miguel Catalan and Severiano Dos Anjos Villaboa for their presentations and evidence-based contributions in the clinical use of PRP. For those who are interested in learning more, please contact me at ntierney at regenmed.com. Opportunities for further learning include scheduling a live training of Dr. Catalan's protocols, participating in Dr. Catalan's circle, and forming your own circle.